Our light is coming. John chapter 12, verses 46 to 48, Christian Standard Bible. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Imagine a world in which no light was in it. Uh, there would only be darkness. Our eyes would be useless. We would all be blind. There could be no such thing as beauty. There would be no distinction between the fair and the foul. Everything would look the same. Our problem, darkness. One of the ways that the Apostle John told the story of Jesus is by bouncing around a few themes throughout his narrative. And one of those themes is the contrast between light and darkness. He told us that Jesus' life was humanity's light, and we were all in darkness until he showed up. He also told us that even though Christ was just one man, when his light shone in our darkness, our darkness did not overwhelm it. In fact, John told us that when Jesus was born, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Before we think about the good news that the light has come to us, we need to step back and consider the bad news. The bad news for us is, all is that we needed the true light. In other words, we were all born in darkness. John picks up on the light and darkness theme again in chapter 3. He tells us that although the light has come into the world, people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. In chapter 8, John records Jesus' own admission that he is the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. But in chapter 9, he points out that the exposure to the light was limited. There Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then earlier in chapter 12, John recorded Jesus as saying, the light will be with you only a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that darkness doesn't overtake you. The one who walks in darkness doesn't know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. So to summarize what John had told us so far, we can say that Jesus had appeared as light for our world briefly and now is gone. What good is that? Well, imagine you have to go into a dark room and do something. Wouldn't it be a good thing for you to have seen the room in, with the light on at least once? Enter a solution. Light to save the world. Let's look again at verses 46 to 47. And there Jesus says, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him, for I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Jesus says that the purpose for his first advent was to save the world. The words that he gave us during his lifetime on earth were enough to make a difference, but the salvation he offers is conditional. Everyone who believes in him will, have, will not remain in darkness. Oh, but anyone can say that they believe in Jesus. That is why Jesus explains that the true believers are those who hear his words and keep them. Every year at Christmas, we remind people that a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. 
we should also remind them that he has explained just how he intends to save us. His salvation is tied to our choice to believe and follow his teachings. The consequences of avoiding the light. People who choose to avoid the words of Jesus are said to remain in darkness now. It is a terrible thing to remain in that kind of darkness. It's the darkness of sin, of error, of failure, of shame, and impending judgment. Jesus said that those who do not receive his words and sayings have rejected him. We each have a personal responsibility to learn everything about Christ and everything he has taught us. We cannot let someone else do that for us. The stakes are too high. Our salvation depends on our proper understanding and acceptance of his words. We need to get the light right. We need to be saved ourselves or else it will be do no good for us to try to save others. Jesus warned against the hypocritical blind guides and we need the light straight from the source. And one final note and the reason I'm talking about this subject as we celebrate Advent just like the other Advent themes, this one as well has a second Advent component. Jesus said that the consequence of truly believing him and following his teachings is permanent life. But the consequences of not doing so is that those who reject his light now will be judged by those words on the last day. Our light was with us for a while and our light is coming back. But only those who live by the light now will enjoy the light and the life he offers forever. God bless y'all. Have a great day.